Let's get our heads back in the space because it was last week when we were talking about this. A few days have passed. Domain and range was the idea. Domain and range was the idea because we were thinking about functions, right? Functions like this. I read this as y is a function of x, meaning that if I know what value x is, I'm going to put an x number in and I'll get a y value out, right? Good morning. Okay. So I've got inputs and I've got outputs, yeah? Now this idea of domain and range, you probably... Good morning. I guess I'll edit that out later. Um, the idea of domain and range simply means what inputs can we put in, right? That's x values, right? x values that we can put in. That's what domain means. And range, which is what we're going to um, carry on with this morning. Range is what are the y values that we can get out, right? What y values are possible? <clears throat> now, if you recall, there were a couple of examples of different kinds of functions that we have met that cause problems for uh, both of these, right? But we, we looked at the um, x values, that's what we focused on, okay? So, quick example, um, just to get your head back in the space, and we're not going to dwell on this too long, right? If I gave you y equals 1 over x, okay? So, this is the standard hyperbola. In fact, um, the technical term is it's a rectangular hyperbola. That's a bit of a strange phrase. Good morning. Just go down that way and then take a seat around that corner. Oh, what are our chairs? Where are the chairs? Take this one. We seriously don't have actually any chairs. What if you can take this one? And then, Eric, can I send you next door? Yeah. I'll give you my keys. Just go into um, K11 and just grab a chair. Turn it clockwise. Okay, sir. Um, what are x? What does it look like? What does it look like? It looks like this guy, right? Now, importantly for the idea of domain, I can't put x equals zero in there. I can't put it in, yeah? So what that corresponds to is the fact that I have this asymptote at x equals zero. Um, I know I have a horizontal asymptote as well, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a second, okay? I can't put anything into this that makes the denominator zero, because I can't divide by zero, yeah? Uh, in the same way, just to extend on this, if you have anything that's in this form, where you've got x's and there are on the denominator, okay? For instance, let's look at a, a trickier example here, example two. If I had on the denominator something like 2x plus 1, this will have exactly the same problem. There's a particular value of x that if I throw it into this, if I try to input it, then the denominator will become zero and my function explodes, okay? Um, now, help me work this out, right? What value of x will I put in here that makes the denominator 0? What's it going to be? It's an easy way to solve this. I'll just say there's the denominator, 2x plus 1, right? And to find out where this breaks, I'll just make it equal to 0, right? I'm going to test this out. Uh, this is just an equation. It's a simple equation too. How will I solve it? So I want to give me a suggestion. Good morning. We're going to need another chair. Um, Ellie, do you want to put your things down? And then, is it still unlocked or did you relock no, it? No, I locked it. Okay, that's cool. Um, put your things down and then go next door. Okay, okay. Grab yourself a chair. Yeah. Hey, no, he's doing the right thing. <laughs> okay. I'm taking the school, mate. Sorry about that. Okay, now, how do we solve this? Come on, someone give me a first step. What will I do to both sides? I'll take one over to the other side, or alternatively, I'll subtract one from both sides, same thing. And then I divide by two, which gives me this. Now, what does this mean? Okay, what this means is, if I put that value in, then the denominator will be zero. I'll get one divided by zero, which is what I actually don't want, okay? So, it, it so happens that what does this graph look like? It looks just like the one I just showed you with one subtle difference. Um, see this vertical asymptote where I can't go, right? Instead of being at x equals zero, like this one, this one will be at x equals negative a half, right? And more or less everything else will look the same. It'll be something like this and something like this. Okay, now keep in mind, right? Domain means x values that I can input. 
Not the x values of that, I can't, okay? So on the basis that I've found where I can't go, how would I write, how would I state, how would I articulate what the domain actually is? We had a look at it last time. Okay, good. I can go less than to the left of this, negative a half. So I'll say x is less than negative a half. That's just one side. I can also go everywhere to the right, yeah, which means not less than, but greater, greater than, okay? Or x is greater than. Okay, let me just put a tiny, tiny note on this that you should say or. You should not say and, even though there's, you know, there's hardly any difference between those two words. Um, but the reason why you don't say and is because there's no number in the universe that is simultaneously less than negative a half and also greater than negative a half. You're either one or you're the other. They exclude each other, yeah? So that's why we use the word or. Okay, um, I'm going to push on this just a little bit before I go to the square roots. You can see any time I've got a fraction like this, we call these rational functions because rational just means a ratio, that's a fraction, okay? Any time you have a fraction like that, the denominator can't ever be zero, right? So let me give you another trickier example. How about this guy, okay? Now, this is starting to step up a little bit, right? We spent a lot of time on quadratics and parabolas before. I can tell you right now, this is not a parabola. I'll show you what it is in a minute. But there's a quadratic here in the denominator. Now, what have we learned from these first two examples here, right? I don't want x to be zero. That'll explode, right? I don't want 2x plus 1 to be 0. That will also explode. So what conclusion do you draw about this guy? So x squared minus 1 is equal to 0? Yeah, I, or to, we'll find it. I don't want the denominator, x squared minus 1, to be 0. So let's see what happens. Let's test out what happens in that case, OK? If x squared minus 1 were equal to 0, this is the value I'm trying to avoid. How would you solve this thing? This is a quadratic. We've been doing this for ages. Yeah, x squared equals 1. OK, so I've, I've got two choices, right? Um, we'll, we'll go this way over here. I can go x squared equals 1. I'll take that over the other side. And now I've got just x squared. I'll take the square root of both sides. Yes? So that gives me with x on the left-hand side. What does it give me on the right? Square. It's the, the square root of 1, which is 1. But don't forget, there are two numbers that I can square that will give me 1. Um, plus one I can square it'll give me one, and negative one can be squared to give me one. Um, so I have two solutions. We can use the a plus b in the a minus b. Okay, so alternatively, so this is option one, alternatively, I could just leave x squared minus one over there on the left, and I can factorize this guy. I can use difference of squares, right? That's a square number, that's a square number. So one of the factorizations you learned earlier this year in products and factors is this guy, right? So this is the difference of squares, and I can go over it another time if you want some more detail on it. But suffice to say that this is the factorization of that, and this is, well, when we factorize quadratics, the point is you make one of them zero, and then you make the other one zero, right? So I get the same pair of solutions here. Now, what does this mean? What, what have I just determined? These values here, like here, and like, like here, these are the values where my function breaks where I can't put in those inputs, okay? Because it'll make the denominator zero, okay? So therefore, what would this thing actually look like? Well, now this is, um, to be sure, this is outside the scope of what you need to know now, but it just takes this idea you already know and extends it a little bit. In each of these cases, there was one place that I couldn't go, one place that was off limits from the domain. But now I've got two. So I'm just going to draw them both in. I'll put plus 1 here, x equals 1. And I'll put negative 1, I guess it would be on the left-hand side of the axis. Right? So, OK, somewhere like that. Now, what does that mean? Where, where else am I going to go? Well, we actually have enough tools to work this out really quickly. Um, think about if I put in uh, a value to get the y-intercept, what values do you put in to get the y-intercept? You put in x equals 0. So if I say x equals 0 in here, I'll get 1 over negative 1. What's 1 over negative 1? It's just negative 1. So negative 1 somewhere like that. Negative 1. Okay. Um, I know if I put in really enormous values for x, right? like I'm trying to work out where it's going to the right, uh, like a million or um, uh, a billion or a or whatever, you put in a huge number. 
can you see that the denominator is going to get enormous, right? It's going to be a really, really big number. If the denominator of a fraction is really big, what does that mean about the whole number? The whole number is actually very small, right? Like 1 over a million, it's a tiny number. 1 over a billion is an even tinier number. So therefore, what I'm actually doing is I'm coming towards 0, like so. I'm going to have something like this in here, and I'm going to get this guy over here. Now, that's weird. That looks really, really weird, OK? You don't need to know how to graph all of that. I can show you in a minute how to get a computer to do it. But the important thing is, I can state the domain of this. I know the x values that I can input, and I know the ones that I can't. Let's just go from left to right. Let's take this part over here. Over here, I can go to the left of this value. Do you see that? You can go to the left. So that's x is less than negative 1. That's part of the domain. That works. My graph exists for all these spots, right? That's one section. What about in here? What, how would you describe this part of the domain? Well, it's between negative 1, right? Between negative 1, I've got to be bigger than that. But I also have to be smaller than positive 1. See that? Like so. So this is my way of writing negative 1 smaller than x, which is smaller than 1. Okay, I, I'm nestled in between them. Okay? There's the left, there's the middle, and then of course I've got one last section over here on the right. How would I state, how would I describe that part? X is to the right, which is bigger than positive 1. Okay? Now, I've got more pieces, but that's okay. That's just all the bits where I can put x values in. It's this, or this, or this. That's what happens with domain when you've got a fraction like this. 